So over to John, not muted. <laughs> How's that? Okay. Are we there? We are. Okay, thank you. Good morning. Good to, see, uh, good to be with you all again. Uh, again, I want to say thank you to the worship team. That was just something special this morning. Uh, I really appreciate all your work, all your effort. Uh, I know it's difficult, but um, that was actually something special, I think, this morning. Um, this morning, we're going to continue our, our series on the person and work of Jesus Christ as we're going through the book of Colossians. Dave started off last week in those first few verses, and I'm going to read from uh, ch uh, verse chapter 1, verses 15 to 23, <clears throat> and it's headed the supremacy of Jesus. So Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. This is from the NIV version. It says, he is the image of the invisible God the firstborn over all creation. For by him, all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created by him and for him. He is before all things and in him, all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead. So that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him. And through him to reconcile to himself all things. Whether things on earth or things in heaven. By making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your mind because of your evil behaviour, but now he's reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation, if you continue in your faith, established and firm, and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel. This is the gospel that you have heard and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. Just an amazing passage. I'm just going to read now from the Amplified Version, just those first three verses. It just, I think the Amplified Version just has, just so descriptive. So, he is the exact living image, the essential manifestation of the unseen God, the visible representation of the invisible, the firstborn, the preeminent one, the sovereign and the originator of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created and exist through him, that is, by his activity and for him. And he himself existed and is before all things, and in him all things hold together. His is the controlling, cohesive force of the universe. So, we come to the first question, who is Jesus? And this question is vital. When I know who Jesus is, the reason why I exist comes into context. My future destiny is defined by who I say Jesus is. Doesn't matter anyone else's opinion, but it's who I say Jesus is. So the first thing I want to say is Jesus is part of a, a, our almighty Trinitarian God. What do I mean? 
I mean this. Wherever Jesus is, there is God. Wherever Jesus is, there is the Holy Spirit. Wherever God is, there is Jesus. Wherever God is, there is the Holy Spirit. Wherever the Holy Spirit is, there is God. Wherever the Holy Spirit is, there is Jesus. We've got a few scriptures to go through. The first one is in Isaiah chapter 9 and just part of verse 6. We have this prophetic statement regarding Jesus uh, being the promised Messiah. And we, we read this. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. That's just one of many scriptures. Another one we'll find right in the beginning of uh, the, the Gospel of John. John chapter 1 verse, verse 1. We read, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus says himself in John chapter 12 and verse 44 and 45, it says this, Then Jesus cried out, when a man believes in me, he does not believe in me only, but in the one who sent me. When he looks at me, he sees the one who sent me. And also, Jesus also said this further on in John chapter 14 and verse 9. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. We've got such a lot of scriptures telling us who Jesus is. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4 we read this, the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God. Another one in Philippians in chapter 2 and verse 6, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. Very nature of God. And in Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3, we have, The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being. So, Jesus Christ fully man and at the same time fully, fully God. As part of our Christmas celebrations, we read about the, the account of, of, of Joseph about to uh, be wed to Mary and then he has questions about that and then being told by an angel regarding Jesus. And we have this in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 23. And they will call him Emmanuel which means God with us. So, Jesus, not just a good man, not just a moral man or a great teacher and the theologian, not only a prophet, but almighty God himself. <clears throat> I would say this central doctrine of the Trinity states that God in one of his modes of his triune being and without in any way ceasing to be God has revealed himself to mankind for their salvation by becoming a man himself and living amongst us. God has given to Jesus participation, <coughs> excuse me, God has given to Jesus participation in his divine nature within the limitations of a human body. So Jesus is constantly active in the power of God to heal the sick, to pronounce and declare forgiveness of sins, and in the power of God offer himself as a sacrifice so that men can be restored in relationship with Almighty God. Jesus Christ is God's ultimate 
and complete revelation of himself. In Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9, we read, For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him. In and through Jesus Christ, we are given the opportunity to know a holy, holy God. Maybe you'd like that this morning. Well, we're actually making available an alpha online and we'll give you details of that probably at the end of this meeting. But if you want to know more about Jesus, if you want to know what it means to be a Christian, if you've got some questions on those areas, then we're very happy to run an online alpha course. Uh, so again, details we'll give you in a, a few moments time. So who Jesus is, he is God himself. God himself who came down to restore us in relationship with himself. Right, so the, we're now going to look at why Jesus came, his purpose, his mission. And the next point I want to make is it's all about reconciliation. In the uh, our passage we read earlier on in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 20. We, we read, and through him to reconcile himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. So reconciliation, it means to restore a friendship between two people or two or more people, to bring into harmony or compatibility when they appear to be in conflict. Another meaning could be to put an end to hostility. Now, so often in attempts of reconciliation between two parties, there needs to be a willingness to lay some things aside. Often these things are of great importance, great significance great moral value to an individual to restore a broken relationship can be very very costly a person's worth in reconciliation i would say is determined by by what someone is willing to pay for them what they're willing to give what they're willing to lay down what they're willing to set aside Going back to our scripture in Colossians, this gives a description of where we were at in verses 21 and 22. It says, once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your mind because of your evil behaviour, but now he's reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. God's desire for reconciliation with man is a major theme right throughout scripture. Ever since the separation of man from God because of sin, God has sought to renew that precious relationship with mankind. He did that first through the Israelite nation, the Jewish people, and now people from all nations. Very popular scripture in John chapter 3 verse 16 we read, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. God gave his one and only son, that's cost. The cross of Jesus Christ is the message of reconciliation. The cross of Jesus Christ is the place of reconciliation. The cross of Jesus Christ is the means of reconciliation. There can be no reconciliation of man to God 
without an encounter with the cross of Jesus Christ. In that passage of John 3.16, we see it's God who takes the initiative in reconciliation. And we are made aware there's no possibility of reconciliation unless sin is, first of all, dealt with. Sin has to be totally removed. Sin and its power, its effect, obliterated, completely destroyed. I mentioned earlier about the cost of reconciliation. And we know that it cost Jesus his life to reconcile us to almighty God. Jesus laid aside his majesty. He laid aside his glory. Jesus receives from God the punishment for sin that should be ours. That's a cost. Jesus Christ, who never sinned, who knew no sin, became sin for us on our behalf so that we can be reconciled to a holy, holy God reconciled but at great great cost another scripture in 2 corinthians 5 and verse 17 to 18 we read this therefore if anyone is in christ he's a new creation the old has gone the new has come all this from god who reconciled us to himself through Christ. It is so clear we cannot be in any doubt that God desires so much a meaningful, special, precious relationship with the likes of us. God not only desires that relationship but makes that relationship possible through the cross of Christ, through the sacrificed blood of Jesus Christ. God's work of reconciliation is vast and all-inclusive. God not only reconciles us as individuals to himself, he reconciles us with each other. God's desire for man is that we should live in harmony with each other. I want to bring in another scripture now from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 12 to 16. And it's headed, Jew and Gentile reconciled through Christ. He says this, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise. Without hope, without God in the world, but now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who's made the two groups one and has destroyed that barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross by which he put to death hostility. So, all one in Christ Jesus. No more enmity, no more exclusion or division, no longer foreigners or aliens excluded from the covenant promise to Israel, but all one having access to a holy, holy God. And it goes on even more. Our bodies now, described as a temple, the very dwelling place of God himself. This is reconciliation beyond our wildest dreams. On top of all this then, God declares, God promises, he will never ever leave us or forsake us. God's work of reconciliation is vast it's all encompassing it's total it's complete nothing lacking nothing missing god has done everything everything that is needed absolutely everything man's part is as simple and as difficult as this to believe in jesus christ to participate in, to enjoy relationship with Almighty God for 
eternity. And you know what? Even death itself will not stop this wonderful, this magnificent, this awesome, special, precious relationship with Almighty God. Maybe you don't know God like that and like to. Maybe you've never seen Jesus quite in that light. You can do that right now. I'm just going to pray a simple prayer. If you want to, just join in with similar sort of words. And you can know the presence of Almighty God. You can know of that reconciliation. You can know of sins forgiven. You can have this new meaning to life and this new, wonderful, loved relationship with a holy, holy God who promises he'll never, ever leave you. If you want to, you can pray a prayer along these lines. Lord Jesus Christ, I now believe you are the Son of God. And you came to this earth and died on a cross to pay the price of my sins so that I can be reconciled to a holy God. I believe that. Jesus, I receive your love. I receive and accept that sacrifice you made for me. I believe you died in my place. Come into my life. Live in me. Make this body into that temple where you will constantly be. And your promise saying you'd never, ever leave me or forsake me. Please come. Please come and renew me. Come and reconcile me to Almighty God. Amen. If you've prayed that and you'd just like to know what other steps there ought to be, then we'll, we'll put the details up at the, uh, at the very end of the meeting. Um, Dave said earlier on that Sarah, one of our members, asked if I would <clears throat> close with just reading a verse of scripture. But I want us to draw us, just to remind us about that prophetic word that Phelan brought, that Eldad and Nebad. Here's just one or two statements. He said, the Holy Spirit is with you. Lift your heart. Let your heart be lifted up with expectation. <clears throat> God's power is not on hold. The Holy Spirit is visiting you in your room. With that in mind, I want to just read this and I'm going to hand over to Phil. This is from Isaiah 60, verses 1 and 2, in the English Standard Version. Arise, shine, your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall, co shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. Thank you, Phil.